Welcome back to Notre Dame Day. I'm Vic Lombardi. Joining us now, one of the all-time greats in Notre Dame football, one of the all-time great quarterbacks, Brady Quinn, who set 36 records during his time with the Fighting Irish. Now I get to see Brady on television each week with his broadcasting responsibilities, CBS Sports HQ and Fox Sports. Also does a radio show for Fox Sports Radio. Brady, welcome to the show. How many times have you been told you have a face for radio? <laughs> My mom used to tell me that all the time growing up. So uh, it's just it's so appropriate that that was what I transitioned into. Come on, man. It must be hard waking up beautiful every morning. That must be a chore, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, sure. You, you you can go ahead and call it that uh -huh. way. But there's a, there's a lot of work that a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes to make it all possible. Oh, I'm sure there is. And Brady, you uh, statistically are uh, one of the greatest quarterbacks ever. 95 touchdown passes, the most ever from someone wearing that gold helmet. So next on that list is current Notre Dame quarterback Ian Book and his offensive coordinator Tommy Reese. They're both tied at 61. That has to be quite humbling. When you think of the tradition, the lore, the list of Notre Dame legends to play that position, and you're, on num you're number one on that list, how does that feel? Well, look, it, obviously, again, that's a that that's something that I think it took a lot of help out around me. You know, I was fortunate to have a lot of great guys, and obviously Jeff Samarja and uh, Raymond McKnight, Maurice Stovall, tight ends, Anthony Fasano, John Carlson, Marcus Freeman. You know, all those guys. I mean, if, without their help, you know, it's it's not a completion, it's not a touchdown. So I was very fortunate to play with a great group of guys. Um, obviously, early on, but really when when Charlie Weiss got there too, you know, his offensive mind and just him putting us in the best position to be able to succeed. So, you know, I think the only regret was not being born maybe two years later and having more time to, you know, be with Charlie Weiss there at Notre Dame. Maybe, maybe things would have worked out a little bit different for him there. Yeah, I wanted to get your thoughts on Ian Book, by the way, because I'm sure you watch like we do. The offense, um, the first few weeks, you're wondering, can they hit the big shot? And then last week against Pittsburgh, it all came together, didn't it? How did how'd you see it come together? What was different? Yeah, I think the biggest thing was, you know, well, one, you know, Ben Saronic really had stepped up the grad transfer from Northwestern. And for anyone who was, you know, was able to watch him during his time there, you kind of saw that he was one of their best, you know, pass catchers on the outside. So I was excited to see what he could be for the Notre Dame uh, team this year. And, and the other thing is uh, people tend to forget, I mean, the way this team's been impacted by COVID, not only just before the season started, but even during the season now, you know, it's hard to get into a rhythm and then to find a chemistry especially with a newer player, a guy who's a grad transfer, let alone some of the other pieces on this team. So, you know, you lost Claypool last year, you lost Komet, you know, you, you bring in a bunch of, of new guys in, a, in a, you know unprecedented time. It's hard to get into that rhythm. I think we're yeah. starting to see this, this entire offense with the past game in, in particular. Brady, I do not want to disrespect Georgia Tech. The next game is against Georgia Tech. I don't care about Georgia Tech. Does Notre Dame have enough to compete with Clemson? Well, first off, let me just say this. Do not let this be a trap game. Oh, right? I know. I knew that, that young was quarterback, that, that, uh, No, hey, that freshman quarterback at Georgia Tech mm. is special now. He is special. He will be something to contend with in the future. I'm telling you right now, Jeff Collins has that program going in the right direction. They've got a lot of good athletes. They're a better defense than people give them credit. And if you trip up this week, that makes next week worthless. Yeah. So do not take this team lightly. All that being said, I mean, look, Clemson's Clemson. They didn't look great last week versus Syracuse. Syracuse might be the worst team in the ACC. So it's not like they can necessarily overlook anyone either. But um, the bottom line is, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll face that challenge when we get there. But that is a tough team to face right now with, with everything that Clemson's got going on. All right, when, when you hear people say uh, there's nothing in college football like being the quarterback at the University of Notre Dame, you, you've lived that. Why is that statement so true, Brady? Because there's no other college quarterback that's going to be recognized around the world. You know, I, I can't tell you how many times just traveling overseas, you know, you run into someone in Ireland, you run into someone in London and Italy, and, and they recognize you most oftentimes as the Notre Dame quarterback. I mean, I think Joe Montana is probably because of his success with the 49ers has been about the only quarterback who, you know, because of that success in the NFL – probably has looked at first as a, as a 49er quarterback before Notre Dame. But outside of him, I, I think most quarterbacks, regardless of what they did after their career, are still recognized as the Notre Dame quarterback. It just has that sort of national following, that sort of national draw.
All right, so you uh, went on to marry uh, a former Olympian, and uh, together you now have had three beautiful daughters. What's it like being a girl dad three times over? It's the greatest thing in the world. You know, I, I, I thought I, I knew what love was when I met my wife, and I, I proposed to her and all that. And then, you know, Sloan came out, our, our eldest, then Tegan, and then Cassidy, and they're all three so different, and I just – with each one, like that love grows more and more and more and more. So I, I'm one of the, I'm the luckiest guy in the world, uh, given what I'm surrounded by in my household. So uh, I just, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure if we're done yet trying to have kids or not. Uh, but I, I know this much. If we have, you know, one more, um, you know, that, that love will only continue to grow in our family. It's been a, it's been a fun journey. So I, I come to understand that tomorrow is your birthday, Brady. Congratulations. Happy birthday. How are you celebrating? Uh, we're not doing anything. We're actually moving right now. So uh, I'm in the process of probably packing up uh, the U-Haul we rented and uh, trying to finish off the move because we sold our house. So we got to get out of here by Wednesday. So uh, we, we won't be doing much other than just getting stuff out of this house. Uh, Ryan Harris wanted me to ask you, though, who is most popular worldwide, the uh, Notre Dame quarterback or one of the Notre Dame tackles? Ryan contends he's more popular than you are. Well, first off, he, he's got that sort of personality where, of course, but sure. not all of us were, were able to be on a reality TV show yeah. before we came to Notre Dame. So that's what most people forget is the stardom that Ryan Harris was able to have before he even stepped foot on campus. Yeah. I tell you what, Brady, you haven't changed one bit. Happy birthday. It's amazing conducting an entire interview with you, <laughs> and you didn't move one bit. You are just sitting there staring right at the television screen. It's amazing. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Thanks, Brady Quinn, everybody.